and today we're in the garage and we're gonna work on a Troy built sickle bar mower. A friend of mine, uh, he picked up the sickle bar mower and he couldn't get it running and uh, he kind of made a deal with me. He said, uh, how about if you get my sickle bar mower running, uh, I'll trade you a chipper. And there was, he had a chipper that the shaft broke in it and I thought, you know what, I, that's actually a pretty good deal. I'm happy with that. And um, on top of it, my buddy went out and he picked up another sickle bar mower for parts. I'm, I don't know how he finds this stuff, but he finds uh, really cool stuff. Um, so he got me one for parts. So between both of them, hopefully we can uh, get one running. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's go. So here it is. It's a Troy built sickle bar mower. One is a five horsepower. One is a four horsepower. And uh, this is the one he got for parts. He has a fairly new cutting edge on it. looks pretty good. But when I look at this one, uh, the top part of the cutting edge was missing. So we're going to have to transfer parts from this one onto here. Because I really think both aren't running. But I really feel like we should get the uh, 5 horsepower running. It's always better to have a little more power for sure. If you have a small engine that has sat for a long time, uh, you're going to have to go over it. Um, I did a little bit of pre-diagnosing on this one. I made sure that it has spark. It has spark. Uh, it just won't start. And um, the gas smells good, but I can only assume someone poured fresh gas in it. So what we're going to skip ahead to is basically uh, taking the fuel tank off it and actually cleaning up the carburetor and then put it all back together and hopefully it fires up. Um, it's pretty much a given. If it's sat for a few years, you're gonna to have to take the carburetor apart and clean it up. It's just pretty much a given. So let's take it off. So we have a five horsepower Briggs Quantum and it's an IC motor. It's hard to see it, there you go. It's an IC motor, which means industrial commercial, I believe. So what we're gonna do is remove the tank and the carburetor and clean them out. So first we gotta remove the air cleaner. Wow, it's pretty clean, but you can tell it's very old. I don't think this has ran for a long time. There's gonna be three bolts that hold this on. You just loosen them up. We're gonna pull this cover out, there's a little vent tube on the back. Okay, so now we're gonna disconnect the fuel line off the carburetor. Uh, we're gonna have to get a little uh, pan or something to catch the fuel. Let's remove this clamp on the carburetor. We'll get the hose kind of loosened up. We're gonna catch all the fuel coming out of the fuel tank. It's gonna take a little while because it's a small line. Quite a bit of fuel in there. It's gonna take a little bit. There you go, she stopped. That's the end of it. Lift this back up, make it a little more room. So now we gotta remove one bolt here and one bolt there. Now you gotta be careful with the linkage. There's a little spring that goes on here. You're gonna unhook it. There is a linkage here. You can just tip the carburetor like this and it unhooks. So we got the carburetor off and you can see that it's really, really gummed up. Um, even your throttle plate barely wants to move. It's really, really gummy in there. Um, so we're gonna start disassembling it and cleaning it up. I'm kind of afraid to see what's in here. Okay, so we're gonna remove the bowl. Wow. This thing is really, really, really gummed up. Ah, oh, look at the fuel coming out of that. Okay. Wow. 
That is disgusting. Okay, let's see if I can get that off. There we go. Wow. Let's get this off without destroying the O-ring. Okay. Wow, that is really, really bad. I normally screw the adjustment screw in and count the turns so I can put it back to the exact same place, but I don't think I can do that. There's so much gummy stuff in there that I probably wouldn't even know when it gets to the end and then I probably damage it or something. So we just unscrewed it. Now there's a little pin in here that's gotta come out and I'm hoping we can get it to move. Wow, that's really, really stuck. <laughs> that is really, really, really bad. Um, man, that just twists the plastic. I don't know if this carburetor is Ooh, ouch, salvageable. Okay. Okay, so it it moved a little bit. Okay, let's get a bit better uh, pliers. So we're gonna use vice grips, but normally you can just push this out and it comes out easy. Um, but it is way, way too stuck for that. Okay, so there you go. See if we can get this out. Man, it still doesn't want to get out. Just be gentle because inside here is the needle and the needle is stuck in there, so I don't want to break the bowl. I'm kind of hoping I can just clean it up and put it back in. Wow, that's, that is really, really stuck. See if I can just be gentle with it. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so we got the uh, bowl out and I don't think it did anything to it. And this is the needle. Uh, that was actually so gummed up in there that it actually uh, glued it in place. He was. Let's see if I can get this cleaned up a little more. I went to the Dollar Tree and uh, I got some of these little wire brushes. Um, I didn't think it would come that handy, but that is actually probably handy to have. I'm going to try to clean up the carburetor the best I can. This carburetor is crazy, crazy gummed up. I'm kind of hoping that I can actually blow through some of those passages because they are really, really stuck. You got to make sure you take the time to clean this out because if you don't, you will get a little chunk break off eventually. And then it's going to plug up your carburetor and then you'll be down again. So you take a little bit of time now and make sure that it's very, very clean. That is absolutely crazy. So I would probably recommend getting a carburetor kit, maybe even getting a float. But I can't get out and get parts, so we're going to try to just see if we can clean this up. There you go. So I think that's as good as it gets. Uh, that's as clean as I can possibly get it without damaging the float. Um, I really don't see any sections where big chunks are going to get stuck in the jet. So that's what you want. You want to make sure that you don't have... Anything in the carburetor or in the bowl that could possibly break off. 
and um, gets stuck in the jet. So we're gonna move on to the main jet. Now the problem with the main jet is it's supposed to have a little hole that goes up the center of it. And my guess is that it is fully, fully plugged. And there's little holes along here and that's where it meters the amount of fuel that it burns is what goes through these holes. I got a really fine wire and I'm gonna try to uh, clear out the hole in here because I don't know, even if I sprayed in it and used compressed air, I don't know if it would actually clear it out. It was really, really plugged. So I'm gonna stick this in the side. There's a little hole here. I'm gonna try to get in there with the wire. Wow, that's hard. You gotta make sure you clear those out. Like this isn't even plugged a little bit. This is bad. Oh, there we go. Now we're through. We'll just try to clean out the hole. We'll try to go down here, clean out the best you can, turn it around. Okay, now we're gonna spray in the hole. It does come out, but I'm not 100% sure that it's actually cleaned out fully. So we'll just keep wiggling the wire around in there. Get it in from the side. I'll clean this out. I normally don't stick wires down these holes, but this thing is more plugged than I've ever seen. Wow, this one here, that doesn't go down. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna actually get them cleared unless I uh, give it a little bit of help. There's two little holes in there. This is where your needle goes. We try to make sure that goes in there. It seems to. Uh, this is where your fuel line goes in. Make sure that's cleaned out. There's a ton of stuff in there. So now we're gonna spray carb cleaner down here, down this hole, that hole, all the holes in the carburetor, and then we're gonna blow them all out. Probably do that a couple times. Make sure it's all cleaned out good. Make sure you have your safety glasses on. You don't want carb cleaner in the head. Do that a few more times. There's a hole down there. Hole in there. Spray a bit in here, down these holes. Make sure everything moves freely. So you get your needle, you get your float, and you slide it into the float so it hangs like that. We're gonna set the float down into the carburetor. We will get this pin and slide it there. And this should move freely. It shouldn't be stuck. It moves nice and free, so that should be good. Get your gasket, put it on the carburetor. Get the bowl, shove it there. Set, oops, set it there for a second. Get your main jet. And we are going to start it into the carburetor. Don't go too crazy, but you want to make sure that it's tight. So we got your adjustment screw. We're going to put that in. 
I don't know where that was set at, but we're gonna start with one turn out. So I'm gonna screw it all the way in. Okay, and then we're gonna do one full turn out. Okay, so now we can throw it back on. We're gonna pop this back onto the linkage. Put it up in place. Hook this spring onto the carburetor. Okay, so you're gonna tighten it up evenly. So now I'm gonna flush the tank out just a few times. I poured fuel in here, drained it out a few times. Uh, these tanks are very, very difficult to actually see down in and see if they're clean. I drained the fuel a few times out into a pan. Um, I So there was no chunks. It looked nice and clean. Uh, but that doesn't mean anything. There could be like a chunk of stuff in there you can't see. Because the way the tanks are made, you can't really clean them out too good. And then when I was done with that, I put a new line with a filter going to the carburetor. That should stop any other little chunks that I missed in the tank. So now we'll put the air breather on, then we'll see if it'll start up. Make sure you pop that line back on. Okay, so I'll get a new air filter, but for now we're gonna throw that in. See if this thing will fire up. Wow, she fires up, but she doesn't really run that great. We got her fired up and I adjusted a little bit. It was kind of hard to show you. Um, but basically the only adjustment on here is your low jet. Your high jet just goes through your main jet. Um, so if that's all cleaned out, it should start up and run. And you know what? I was pretty impressed with how easy it started. Uh, this thing has not been ran for a long time and you saw how the carburetor looked. Um, but we got it cleaned out and it's running good. So I'm gonna let you hear what it sounds like. It has a little bit of a sputter. Uh, we'll just let it run for a little while. I'm sure uh, letting it run for a good while, getting it nice and hot, might clear up a little bit of that, and then I can do a real good adjustment on it. But otherwise, I got her up and running. Another day, we're gonna have to uh, fix the cutter bar, and then maybe we can go out and try it. So uh, that's about enough for today, and you guys have a good one.